Over the past few days, many parts of North India have experienced quite severe rains and many states have seen a massive amount of flooding. The visuals have been quite stunning, even apocalyptic in many ways. We have seen from states like Himachal Pradesh, you know, a huge amount of debris flowing into cities, people facing all kinds of risks. There have been reports of death, many families going missing, administrations having to work a lot to find out the whereabouts of these people. But the key question, like in many of these instances, has been that is this just a natural disaster? Is it just a result of rains? Or is it also about how we see development, how we have sort of developed our cities, our villages, our environment, how do we treat our environment? To talk more about this, we have with us Tikender Singh Panwar, who is the former Deputy Mayor of Shimla. Tikender, thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. So, you just come down from Shimla to Delhi. And so, maybe could you first take us through really what is the scope of the damage, especially in Himachal Pradesh? When you ask scope, I mean, I think the, the damage has been colossal, phenomenal. And uh, if you ask me, the state government has estimated that the loss could be somewhere around 14,000 crores, huge loss. And uh, as you rightly pointed out, I think in my lifetime, I haven't seen uh, such a, uh, a vast uh, damage taking place across the state. Uh, not a single district has been spared. And, uh, uh, you know, we've seen gory uh, uh, pictures, videos, where uh, cars were like dancing in the, uh, in the river streams. And, uh, you know, the, the, the entire mud river flowing through a village in Thunag, in Mandi district, that happens to be the, the home place of uh, our former chief minister, the previous chief minister, Mr. Jairam Thakur. Uh, still, the two major roads, I mean, the national highways also, to say, I mean, the roads that connect to our borders uh, with China, uh, are still not been restored. The, uh, the Shimla Chandigarh one, uh, which apparently it feels is going to take weeks together, if not months, to allow, you know, even the minimal passage to pass through. I mean, it's, uh, Likewise, the Sh Shimla, uh, the Chandigarh Manali Highway is literally washed away. So, yeah, it's, uh, the damage has been like very vast, very, very colossal. And uh, uh, the, the, the rise of the, uh, the water in the river has mm -hmm. been uh, like unprecedented, we've mm -hmm. witnessed. And uh, I think today we are witnessing in Yamuna, I mean, right. in Delhi, where I'm here today. Uh, the water has already reached ITO, it has reached s certain parts of the civil lines. Uh, I'm told that even uh, you know, the ISBT, Kashmiri Gate, is literally un inundated now. So, you know, you can just imagine, I mean, just look at the, draw the canvas, I mean, right yeah. from the Himalayas to, the, uh, to this place, I mean, it's been really very vast. Right. So, again, in this context, of course, like I said, the rains are, of course, one aspect of it. But the larger question always in such events take place. And we have seen many instances of urban flooding, which we'll get to. But specifically focusing on the Himalayas is the, really the question of our model of development. And what has changed over the past many decades that seems to sort of lead to these kind of disasters where, uh, you know, it seems like uh, th there definitely are some issues in how we are sort of uh, conceived planning, how we have sort of thought of development, what our, uh, uh, how our understanding of dealing with forests and nature is. So how really do you think, what are the underlying factors that have possibly led to the situation getting worse? Well, before I think I come to the underlying factors, definitely it's a climate change. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, we should not miss that point. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have to, I mean, the scientists are really screaming at us through the IPCC reports, through the working group one, two, and three, and the recent ones, what the, inter, uh, the, the meteorological department try, uh, explained, you know, the rise in temperatures in the ocean, the oceanic rise, and of course, the mix of uh, our uh, south westerly monsoon with mm. the north, north northwestern disturbances. So there has been a fairly large precipitation, but that was always there, if you ask me. Not always, but most of the times, because I remember in my school days, uh, seven days, eight days, we've seen continuous rainfall, okay? Uh, but the damage has never been like this. So now I think it's more, apart from the nature's fury, it's more the human-induced uh, uh, 
catastrophe, I would, right. I would point out. So it's, uh, and when I say human induced, it's not all human beings, but you know the kind of uh, developmental trajectories we have uh, advanced, particularly in the two uh, states, that's Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh. Now, if you see the genesis of this is, uh, Himachal is quite a different state because here the, you, we are after Kerala in the Human Development Index and there was a road map that was designed by our first chief minister, which was kind of abruptly ended post 90s. And you know, the center asked the states, and that's how later when Uttarakhand also came into being, uh, that uh, we are not the ones, uh, your you know, crying mothers, okay, and you be like crying babies, uh, you have to manage your own uh, resources. So the impetuousness of uh, generating these resources, uh, especially in the Himalayan states, uh, which were not carved out because of financial uh, uh, capacities, or, you know, but, but they were precisely because of some linguistic basis or some of uh, the mountain aspirations of the mountain right. people. That's how these states were carved out. Uh, so financial uh, capacities, financial strength was not uh, ever their evolutionary status or, you know, even their capacities for that matter. So there was this strong stimulus, strong catalyst that was there from the center, but that, as I said, abruptly ended post-90s, we have the FRBMs and all. Why I'm bringing this? Because they said, look, you have to generate your resources. Now, if you ask me, I come from a mountain state of Himachal Pradesh, if you ask me, how do I generate my resources? Either I sell or squeeze my labor, that's my human capacity, or I squeeze and sell my nature. So, you know, so there's a limit to sell your labor. I mean, they did, you know, uh, instead of regularizing and uh, so scrapping the posts, more outsource and all this stuff, not to go into those details because that's not right now uh, appropriate. But the point is, so how I, sell, I start selling my na uh, nature. How do I sell my nature? I sell my nature by constructing n number of hydropower dams. And that's the shift that we find even in the World Bank understanding. If you see the World Bank documents post 2005, Prior to 2005, the World Bank was like against the construction of mega hydropower dams. Uh, but post 2005, they started funding uh, large hydropower uh, dams, Satlujal, with the Nathpa Chakri Power Corporation, and the latest one we have the subsidence that was taking place in Joshimat. So once I start selling nature, hydropower is my potential. I start selling hydropower. Tourism is my potential. Right. I start selling tourism. How do I sell tourism? Not just by constructing few hotels, but, you know, uh, allowing large influx of the people. Mm -hmm. People can't come, so we start widening the roads. Mm -hmm. And there is this impetus that comes from the center, the NHI intervenes. Uh, because of other reasons also, they say it's a strategic uh, location for us, so therefore we have to widen the roads. Believe me, I mean, the loss that has happened in Himachal Pradesh, I'm not sure about Uttarakhand, is precisely in these two roads, the roads that are uh, subject to massive widening. That's the first part, not to go into further details. The second part is, and of course there are losses other places also, but the impetus is this. So there's a, this relationship we should not forget ab about. And the second is, how do we construct a road in the Himalayas? Himalayas are the youngest range of mountains. We can't copy the Switzerland model where we have a different range of mountains which are fairly strong fairly old, older than, than the Himalayas. And most of uh, the, the widening is taking place, which is kind of uh, uh, a very loose strata. You know, it, it was, uh, 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 I mean, there's no, there's no rock even, okay? And so, so in the mountains, there is a practice that you, if you have to cut a mountain, the mountain has to be cut in slopes. Mm -hmm. So you cut mountains in, in a, a, what we call in terrace form. So that there is uh, no, uh, I mean, the loss is minimal. But if you see the two uh, highways, the the, uh, the Chandigarh Manali and and Chandigarh uh, Shimla or beyond, the slit is vertical. Right. It's a sheer vertical slit because that's how the private companies, the nexus between National Highway Authority of India, and they have allowed this. And you see the road has been completely washed away. Mm -hmm. Mark my words, it's not just this time, but it is going to be a perpetual problem for another few decades to come, till the time they are able to restore. 
and uh, you just visit and you'll find i mean every day you uh, you even when it's not raining you find stones coming down boulders and there are two major slips that has happened in that chandigarh simla road and uh, i think uh, in uh, in one portion the road has been completely washed away right. so that's the first re- first part the second part is because of this change dynamics in the himalayan economy that no more produces cereals and you know that has th- th- there has been a dramatic shift in uh, the production of uh, horticulture crops like apples uh, tomatoes off season vegetables and all that stuff so how do i transport it there is no uh, rope ways so i have i need the road to reach my village so there has been massive kind of construction of roads that has taken place some of the roads and the at the famous pradhan mantri uh, gramin sadak yojana i can comment these are better roads because there is a formula how these roads are constructed but the roads that are constructed by the jcb the you know the new the new excavator the view, i mean so it enters uh, the uh, the mountains and just creates that road so the road is functional for a, a strong utility vehicle but the moment it rains the road withers away and it is this debris that enters finally where where would the debris go the debris enters the river system and the entire ecosystem and that's why you find the color the, the sheer color we've seen rains but we've never seen a muddy water right it's completely muddy so where is it coming from it's massive kind of uh, uh, intervention or uh, you know engagement with nature with with the uh, with the newer forms of uh, development which is like catastrophic Absolutely. and we can we can easily witness uh, right. the way things are happening and the third thing is i think also the way we are urbanizing mm-hmm. i think yeah and also there is projects like the char dham project for instance which seem to i didn't good. jump to uttarakhand but ah. yeah char dham is another reason right and uh, and this char dham is never going to be the dham hmm. mark my words because every year when there will be rains you can't stop the rains and why should we stop the rains hmm. they are part of our civil, i mean ev- evolutionary process so and we can't even do that uh, so uh, you know uh, it's it's like uh, so people say it's a, an unplanned uh, disaster i say it's a planned disaster right. it's a planned uh, attack on the mountains it's a uh, it's a pl- planned devastation of the himalayas and the himalayas are answering back right it's as simple as that Absolutely. Uh, Tigendra, in this context, also you mentioned uh, the uh, t- tomato product, tomato produce, and say, for instance, apple farmers and all that. And I guess this is also taking a very heavy toll on the employment and livelihoods of people as well. So we we'll talk a bit Mark about that. Mark my words. Uh, the two major roads, um, if you if you see the Shimla Chandigarh Highway, uh, if I'm not wrong, I think 70% of the apple produce is transported through this road. Uh, are apples coming from kotkai kotgarh rodu rampur kinnor uh, kumarsan you know these are the apple bowls of himachal pradesh is completely gone it will not be restored in another few weeks which means an apple is a perishable uh, produce i mean what do you do so so you you can imagine what is going to happen likewise the apples coming from manali kullu and even uh, areas of mandi are completely gone oh. so uh, so you know all this is being done for the larger context of development for the people but then we find the same people same development gets uh, badly hit and uh, not to mention the loss of lives i mean not to miss the point that uh, there is massive loss of lives that have taken place and just yesterday the i saw the chief minister saying chief minister of himachal pradesh i think there are more than 30000 people who are uh stranded and maybe half of them have been evacuated but it's 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 a it's a complete disaster so uh, uh, the kind of uh, developmental trajectories uh, the poor states i would say the poor states who have uh, no wish of theirs in fact than to just move on to this path the impetus that comes from the center that you ought to sell your nature and they do not even have the capacity to say no to that you know because the push is so 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 strong and i can tell you uh, take for example river satluj the moment it enters in india uh, so kab shaso shaso jangi jangi thopan thopan pori then we have shongthong karcham kanchamangtu 
नाथपा झाकड़ी रामपुर लूरी कोल डैम एंड बाकड़ा डैम आई मीन दीज प्रोजेक्ट्स हैव आई दिन कमीशन और देर इज अ प्लान टू कमीशन दैम विच मीन्स द रिवर विल बी कंप्लीटली कॉन्ड्यूटेड देर बी नो वॉटर इन द रिवर बट एंड द एंटायर डेबरी हैज बीन डम्प्ड अलॉन्ग द रिवर बेड and when there's a flood you know the kind of rains that we have the entire debris moves along with the river so it's it's a complete catastrophe right and again finally just because often we end these discussions with this question and i think it's a very important question that you know uh, when we talk about this development model a key aspect of it is that it is pitched as inevitable that this is the only way to go about it but from your experience how do you see say is there another sustainable as well as productive way to sort of go about it I think the another sustainable way, I would not say what the way is. I would say what the process could be. Mm. The process is, and people have started fighting back. You come to Kinnor now. The Shangtong Karcham project, they're not allowing even a single new hydro unit coming up, and the tribals have uh, galvanized themselves, and they have a very interesting slogan. I mean, which is like really resonating across the mountain communities. Is no means no. They say we won't. We don't allow. We won't allow a single new. unit of hydroelectricity to be generated because they've already lost villages mm. natpa village is gone urni village is gone i mean what happened in joshimat we have already experienced that likewise you see in sangla how sangla has been hit so i think the alternative process should be that a no to large dams that's the first thing b there has to be complete veto with the people i mean and we had that provision in the gram sabha if gram sabha says no you cannot construct a hydropower for that matter a cement plant so i think after all this old developer you can't expect you know a coal dam coming up in uh, in nahan sirmore district and getting watered for delhi and what fun is it i mean people lose their so so you know how can it be a win win situation i don't think that there are that there are easy ways and solutions at the same time i think we ought to i mean what the supreme court is also saying though i'm i don't buy this malthusian theory but you know there has to be a debate on the carrying capacity of the mountains right. so this whole bunch of mass tourism that we are having uh, simla has a population of 200000 and we are getting some more than 5.5 million tourists so it's not a sustainable model and it's so they come and they go back in the evening i think what we require is more sustainable uh, more uh, which is like uh developing you know the the entire ecosystem than tourists rushing in and rushing uh, going going back so people have the development model in that process has to be people centric and people centric doesn't mean the government centric right. okay the state governments charter out a path and then they say look this is how we've taken because we've got the mandate we've got elected and that's how we can i don't think that's the way how uh, the development process has to take place the second part is i think we have to revisit the whole question of uh uh mountain ecology particularly forests mm. forests and water have a very strong relationship uh after the nationalization of forests in 1980s the entire building typologies have also uh, surrounded around uh rcc what we call the reinforced cement and concrete why shouldn't salvaged wood and timber be part of those building ty- typologies so you know the point is uh, when you have to build in, in the mountains the mountain typologies have to be different not akin to what you're planning in the plains so uh, that's that's i think another area which we have to look at and uh, i think thirdly what is important is how do we create those structures the new governance models mm-hmm. and the governance models take for example uh now there's a loss so there's a loss to the bus and there's a loss to human lives a loss to the human life would be of course it can't be compensated but there is an element of insurance whether you have a life insurance corporation or the other private corporation players that are going to pay likewise for a bus there's an insurance but the asset that the village community or you know in the urban communities have is this small culvert is the school that is gone or the dispensary that is gone i think new forms of governance have to be uh, uh, to be visualized or maybe um, maybe may debated where these assets can also be incorporated this in in this whole bunch of uh, uh, maybe insurance or whatever model we we call it but you know you ask me i mean uh, what is the work of an mla in himachal pradesh i'm not sure about uttarakhand but uh, 
predominantly of all uh, of most of the MLAs in in the mountain region. The first task of the MLA is transfers, ensuring the people to move out <laughs> or to come in. And the second one is writing DOs, what we call the demi-official letters, to the chief minister, uh, demanding a grant for loss to the road, right. loss to the culvert. Why cannot the governance model be a little altered? Why should the MLA be interested about culvert? Why shouldn't the village community be empowered for you know uh, uh, converting them into custodians? Mm. I think there could be a hell lot of transformation that can take place Absolutely. because then the ownership will come from the communities. I think this needs to be altered. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tikinder, for I think giving us the larger picture, not only about this uh, horrific disaster, but also I think the questions we need to address uh, as a country as a whole. And of course, we didn't get time to go into the floods that are taking place in cities, the mega cities, yeah. for instance, which is an entirely different uh, can of worms, so to speak. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's all we have time for today. As we see, this is not just a natural disaster. It's also, as Tikinder said, a planned disaster in some senses. And the questions that arise are really of what kind of development model we need to have in India, in the urban spaces, in the Himalayas, across the country in various ways. We'll be covering similar issues in future videos and stories in NewsClick. So go to our website, check out our social media channels and keep watching.